Now, for more on what we can expect from the Jackson Hole Symposium, I'm joined by Hong Tran. He's the Executive Managing Director at the Institute of International Finance. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, first of all, in terms of expectations, what should we be looking for from this meeting? Well, basically, uh, ex the expectation is low in terms of any new things coming on the policy front out of Jackson Hole. However, with that, investors still uh, look at the speeches basically by Fed uh, Chair Yellen and ECB President Draghi uh, and try to see if there's any change in tone when they talk about uh, the, the uh, outlook and the timeline for policy, uh, policy move in the future and their thinking on inflation. And what are some of the aspects from some of these key speeches that you think people are really going to be looking for, especially when they need guidance on where the global economies are heading? Right, so they will look at uh, the uh, key theme of the meeting would be uh, fostering uh, um, a dynamic global economy and they will look into uh, the um, uh, thinking about why the economy has been uh, lackluster, why wage and price formation has been low and uh, what policy can do to address those uh, impediments. So why do you think the expectations, as you mentioned, are so low for this meeting in terms of outcome? Uh, low in the sense of anything new on uh, um, upcoming uh, monetary policy uh, uh, measures. But uh, the discussion we will see on their proceeding to see if they are making any headway in terms of understanding why the economy is uh, uh, slow growing. So from the, from the point of, the, of some of these central bankers, why come to Jackson Hall? Is it really just to get a gauge of where global economies are heading, or do they really go in with the intention of, of trying to make some sort of changes or adjustments to monetary policy? Well, uh, they are not making a monetary policy there. The uh, Jackson Hole uh, Symposium started in 1978 uh, and gradually become the uh, uh, gathering of uh, central bankers uh, for, in this year, about 40 countries, policy makers and, and uh, economic uh, economists to exchange view and to discuss uh, issues uh, posing a challenge to the economy and to monetary policy in particular. So more deep dive into the factors that uh, lead to growth in the economy. Now let's talk about that. The ones, first of all, the issues that are leading to growth in the economy. Right. What are the issues that they're most interested in looking at? Well, uh, I would say issues like uh, the slowdown in productivity growth in uh, the US and other countries. Uh, changes in demographics that may have uh, implication for the structure of the labor market and the formation of wage and also for prices and these kind of issues that have lead to a situation where growth has been uh, lower than in the past and uh, inflation is also low. And what about the challenges? What are some of the headwinds that they're looking at, whether it's geopolitically or otherwise, that's also weighing on economies? Well, at the moment, uh, the key is to try to understand why with the decline in unemployment rate in the U.S., but also elsewhere, uh, wage and inflation remain uh, lackluster. Now, it's interesting because one of the concepts that some economists use is the, Phil the Phillips curve, this inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. Now, a lot of people are wondering, does that still matter as much, given some of the strategies that we saw central banks have to take during the global financial crisis? Well, it is quite a complicated story because um, um, uh, behind what we have seen, is the fact that there are several uh, temporary short-term factors that uh, uh, pull down the average uh, growth rate of inflation. However, if you abstract from all of that, the underlying uh, relationship between increase in uh, employment, decline in unemployment rate, particularly for continuously employed persons, the wage for those uh, group of people is higher than the average figures, about 3.5 instead of 2.5. So there's a mixture in here that uh, needs to be un uh, investigated. Now, it's interesting. With all these global economic issues at hand, a lot of people might be wondering why they meet in Jackson Hole as opposed to, say, other financial epicenters like, like New York or perhaps Brussels. What's the significance of Jackson Hole? Well, as I said, it uh, started in uh, uh, 1978 and has become a retreat for central bankers to come and, and contemplate and discuss uh, the economic challenge of the, t of the times. In Europe, the ECB in recent years have started to do that in Sintra in Portugal. So we have this kind of uh, model for um, discussion and gathering among central banks. All right, well, thank you so much for your insights. Hong Tran, Executive Managing Director at the Institute of International Finance.